Today in the conversation, we're talking about PDA. When I say PDA, what comes to mind? People excessively touching each other or kissing or letting everyone around them in on intimate details of their relationship, often too close to you in a place that you can't escape, right? Maybe if you're a fan of The Office, the American version, you'll remember that episode where Michael and Holly are reprimanded by the entire office to stop constantly touching one another. It's a pretty good episode. Oftentimes, I know I grimace at people that are too showy with their affection. It's like, I get it. You're in a relationship. Now get away from me. Today, I've got a story of a priest who chooses to wear his cleric to a baseball game. Now, if you're like me, your skin might be crawling or uh, you might be getting a little queasy because you might be thinking, what's going to happen? What is so important that happens at this game that you need to tell me about it? Here to tell us a story from the beginning is Father Ricardo Viveros, the priest in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. You know, I'm a um, lifelong Dodger fan, and I've been blessed to go to many Dodger games, and I was invited to go to um, opening day this past year, uh, opening home game at Dodger Stadium, and they uh, were played the San Diego Padres, and I wasn't even thinking, you know, uh, Padre, Father, and I've never worn my clerics to the game before, but... um, I was working that day, and I knew that if I had to get had a sick call or I needed to leave early, I wouldn't have time to come back and change. So I decided to uh, go to the Dodger game, wearing my Roman collar. And as soon as I parked at Dodger Stadium, you know, you see a sea of blue. Everybody's wearing blue. It's the Dodgers' opening day at home, and people are noticing instantly who's this tall guy wearing all black, you know, and. And it was a bit warm that day, so as I was walking up, I knew I would stand out. And internally, I was thinking, oh, I should have just uh, wore my Dodger shirt and been one of the fans that day. So yeah, there was an element of me like, what am I doing? You know, because it wasn't something that I normally do at a Dodger game. Where are my clerics? I walk into the stadium, and instantly, I got very positive reactions. I, w- I was surprised. People were yelling, "Hey, uh, Father." Uh, go bless the Dodgers or let's pray for the Dodgers. I also got a few looks of people like, I can't believe that actually a priest, you know, and sometimes I would walk by and people would say, what's the priest doing here? And a lot of people were joking, uh, who are you rooting for? Are you rooting for the Dodgers or Padre? Are you rooting for the uh, Padres? But what I really realized as the game went on, people were uh, more than happy to see a priest in his collar out publicly at a sporting event, and um, that experience, you know, reminded me that I need to uh, be visible to God's people, and throughout the game, many people came up to me and asked me for a blessing, and asked me to pray for their families, and uh, a couple of people did ask me if I if I could hear their confession. I had just gotten some food, and I went to um, just kind of walk around the stadium a little bit, I, that's what I tend to do at the stadium, and uh, uh, a person stopped me and asked me if I could hear their confession. So totally caught me off guard, but um, of course I did. So here I was amongst, you know, thousands of fans, and this this person um, wanted to go to confession, so I was able to hear their confession. And it was a very positive experience, and it reminded me that, you know, Christ, the work of Christ happens everywhere, even at a, a baseball game with thousands of people. So I think what was so special about it was, the fact that the person was not afraid to approach me, that their faith was so important that they they saw a priest and said, you know what, I need to go, so let me go ask them. So that was an experience that I wouldn't have had, you know, if I didn't have my, my collar on. So it, it did mean a lot, you know, who, who how many people could say they went to a Dodger game and somebody went up and asked them to go to confession? You know, it's an experience I'll never forget. Thank you for sharing, Father Ricardo, so much with your story. My question is... I think of this particular display of affection for God, this public display, it's it's amazing to hear your experience of what you were able to gain from that. Is there something that an average Catholic can gain by showing simple public dis- displays of affection for God, you know, whether that's praying before a meal at a restaurant yeah. or, you know, sign of the cross? I think, or, you know, not being afraid to be Catholic. It's very easy to be Catholic when you're at Mass on Sunday, you know, you're with your, your fellow Catholics, but... 
with the what I've really realized is when families are out in public, you know, they pray before a meal or they're not afraid to make the sign of the cross, but, you know, that really touches people, even non-Catholics, and they say, wow, you know, that person, they're not afraid to show their their love of God, their love of Christ, and that that's such a witness to the world. The world is craving for, for Jesus, you know, and I see that more and more in our young people. They're not afraid to show their faith in public, and I think that's a great thing. There was a priest recently, I'm not sure if you heard, that went to a music festival in Napa. Did you hear about this guy? I did hear about that. And he sat outside, right? Yes, exactly. He yeah. sat outside, and it's interesting. They quoted him at the end of the article saying that what he thought was really remarkable was that it was so easy to do. This was something that, again, it's obviously it was extremely special for him, but... It didn't take a lot of planning, right? Yeah. They knew this festival was coming up. He went and sat there and talked to people. Yeah. You know, that experience really reminded me how, how people really love their priest, but more importantly, they love Christ. And I've, I've heard from people when I do go out in public, where I call it, how happy they are that I am doing it. And they, they love seeing priests out there wearing their robot collars, you know, as a sign and symbol of who we represent, Jesus Christ. So. Yeah, I think it definitely inspired me to do that more often. You know, I, I really appreciate, again, that you had the courage to, to do this, and maybe uh, you, you're a little more predisposed than the rest of us to be courageous because, for the most part, you always have the collar on, right? Oh, yes. Was, yes. Um, I, I wear my collar every day when I'm in the parish, absolutely. You know, for me, it's, it's a no-brainer, really. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I think that what you're saying is really the, the heart of this, that— we can be a representative of Christ. And Absolutely. Like I mentioned, uh, hearing this story for the first time, I was really nervous. Like, something bad is going to happen. You're going to be one of those guys getting murdered at uh, <laughs> Dodger Stadium. <laughs> My uh, congregation, they're always hearing about it. You know, they, you got to make it relatable, too, you know. Mm. That's, I think that's, that's a great point, too, that it's one thing to beat people over the head with your brand of display of affection, but if you can make it relatable to the people around you, you know, they saw that you were one of them, right? You were exactly. a Dodger fan. Exactly. I people was, just, more, I was rooting for the team just like them and nervous, but, you know, had my opinions on who should be doing what mm-hmm. and all of that, just like them. And I think that's what's really, really important is so, so often priests, people think priests, like, we never leave the rectory, we never leave the church. So even the other experiences with I've gone to the gym and parishioners have recognized me or just out, you know, if I'm out with other priests, go to the movies or out to dinner. It's like sometimes we get a double take because they forget, kind of like how teachers, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes they're students, they think teachers never leave the school. We we get that too as priests. Father Ricardo, thank you so much for being on our, on the show. Um, w- would you mind uh, closing in a quick prayer? Oh, I'd be honored to. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us your only Son, Jesus Christ. May we strive to follow him always. May we never be afraid to live out our faith publicly. And may we use our lives to be the voice of Jesus Christ and his face to all people. Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. So a few things occurred to me listening to Father Rick. As amazing as his story is, I'm sure we can all recall a time when we encountered somebody who was a little too into their faith. You know who I'm talking about. Those people who are covered head to toe in religious articles. Shirt, crosses, bracelets, tattoos. It's like, come on. This is the equivalent of a couple making out in public. You know, you have to find a balance of uh, respect of the space that you're in, you know. So what is it that differentiates Father Rick and these other people? People who wedge God into every interaction they have, even when it's uncalled for or awkward, is authenticity. You know when someone cares and is trying to share with you versus those people who just want to push their belief on you. It's hard to interact with these people. They seem like they have something to prove. It's just like be a person and talk to me like a person. And if the topic comes up, feel free to geek out, but it makes me uncomfortable when I can tell that you're not being authentic or when you're trying too hard. 
Sometimes, though, I get it. We get excited and we can't help ourselves. Sometimes someone approaches us wanting to know and we go a little overboard and we scare them. My next guest has that exact example of what I'm talking about. I'm joined over the phone by Katie. Dang it, Katie, I'm blanking on your last name. That's okay. It's totally a mouthful. It's Katie Eberwein. So thank you so much for having me. Katie is an evangelist and she's going to tell us a little bit about maybe the reality for you of expressing your faith uh, to those around you or what's the story you have for us? Sure. Um, so, you know, all throughout college and stuff was really pretty um, open about my faith and expressing it and um, had the opportunity to go abroad my sophomore year um, and was actually, so as a part of this group, this, you know, secular college group and was the only Catholic there. And it was challenging in and of itself, but I found that there was one time um, in particular, I was kind of out in the open praying my rosary and this one girl in my group came up to me and just asked, you know, oh, what what is that you're doing? What what is that? And I um, took that to mean, oh, you're super interested, uh, you know, I'm super interested in the faith. I'm super interested in learning all about it. So, um, you know, kind of got that glossy eyed look and started talking just about how awesome the faith was and, um, you know, just smiling and getting really excited and kind of looked over at her and realized she was starting to back away slowly. And, um, you know, she was just curious as to what the rosary was. She was not particularly interested in learning every aspect of our beautiful and rich faith. So I think I just totally misread her interest. You know, you you have this desire, and you know, I'm saying you, the general you, you have this desire to share that love um, that you've experienced with other people and, you know, oftentimes they're coming from a totally different place. You know, they don't even know, like for, for her, she was just wondering what you were doing in that moment. I think it definitely keeps us humble, too, you know, that it's not us doing the work in their hearts, that it's God. So, you know, it, even though it can be so discouraging when we get turned down or when, you know, they do the back away slowly, I think it's really important just to remember, too, that it's it's God doing the work, not us. He can turn it into something really good and beautiful. So I think, um, you know, learning from those experiences, learning, okay, you know, maybe not come on so strong or maybe, you know, going about it in a different way that's a little bit more approachable, a little bit more attractive to someone who's not in the faith. But um, at the end of the day, just trusting, okay, even in my mistakes, even in my humanity, God can use that. I think that you bring up a really good point about attractiveness. And I think it's important to... Yes, express yourself, but do it in a way that will be attractive to people. Katie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, Up next, I have some ways that you can show your faith to others in an attractive way. Stay tuned. Here's something I realized after talking to Father Ricardo. When we're willing to show our affection for God, people notice. And they're more likely to engage you on that topic, and that can be a great way for you to advocate for your faith. Um, How we present ourselves can lead to real conversations with people. I think it's obvious that not every interaction that we have will be a positive one when you show your affection publicly. Uh, Some people might be like me and grimace at you. I think another hindrance on us showing our affection is that oftentimes the options available to us to show our affection are limited. Maybe you have a really old retreat shirt that's dingy and faded. I'm calling everyone to a higher standard here. If we're going to use our presence as a sign of affection for God, we need to step it up. For some of us, that means we pray before a meal at a restaurant. Maybe it means engaging with someone you see in need in your life. Um, or on the street, I understand that this might be a step too far. That for some of us, we might need to be subtle in the way that we show our affection. Maybe you have a very personal relationship with God, and exposing that to the world would be a challenge. Maybe wearing a crucifix or that old retreat shirt would seem disingenuous. Um... Again, if you're still wearing that old retreat shirt thinking you're doing a service, it's time to reevaluate your choices. In an effort to help us show our affection visually, I did a little research to find good Catholic resources for people. These groups offer a variety of options to all of us to show our 
affection publicly. First up is a site you're more than likely familiar with, tinysaints.com. Uh, in an effort to explain the lives of saints to their children, creators Joe and Colleen Klinker inadvertently came up with these colorful caricatures of saints, uh, kind of like a saint emoji almost. And these became tiny saints keychains. You have to have seen them, simple keychains that at first glance you might think are from an anime. Speaking with the creator, one of the creators, Joe, he mentioned that their approach at Tiny Saints was you're going to attract more flies with honey. If someone notices your unique keychain of a saint, it might be more attractive to somebody passing by than, say, a crucifix. It could be a perfect spark to get the conversation going. Uh, they have a ton of saints on there, so check them out. Next up is Pal Campaign at palcampaign.com. That's P A L campaign.com, which you should be familiar with if you saw Mary's interview with owner and designer Joe Kim. If you haven't seen that, check it out on our website, theconversationpodcast.org. On the Pal Campaign, you can find some really amazingly designed shirts, sweaters, hats, mugs. Um, I really like. Uh, Joe's designs. Really simple, modern, and inviting. People will look at these with envy, and then you can engage with... <laughs> People will look at these designs. People will look at these with envy. And you can engage with them <laughs> on the perils of being envious or something. Something better and not lame. <laughs> uh, my last recommendation is a site that you have to know. She's super popular uh, called blessedisshe.net. This group of women has banded together let me read you their, their tag. We are women just like you. We are single, married, mamas, and grandmas too. Here at Blessed is She, we help foster community through daily devotions straight to your inbox. We walk with you on this crazy journey as daughter of the king. They have some amazing stuff in their store. Really well-designed prints and posters, um, some journals and cards. I like the sense of community that they're creating. They seem to be really concerned with personal, the personal growth of their community and the spiritual relationship. Um, after speaking with them, it was clear that their focus is bringing the beauty of life and the beauty of that relationship with God into every area of your life. And I, I really like that. I think if we can show our affection for God and people can look at us and say, there's something about that person that's beautiful. I want to know what that is. That is going to be the thing that draws people in, right? So let's, in the, in the coming week, let's try to be inviting. Let's try to be beautiful. Let's try to show people a little bit of that beauty and a little bit of the affection that we have for God. I know it'll be challenging, um, but I want you to find the thing for you that, that is your affection for God and, and a way that you can show it to the people around you. I hope the conversation doesn't stop at the end of this show. I hope that you go out, continue the conversation in your daily life, talk to people about how they're showing their affection for God. It's a, it's a pretty easy conversation to have, I think, if you know pe where people are at. That's it for me this week. Make sure to keep up with us at theconvo.us. You can follow us at the con convoso like convos with an o convoso convo was already taken see you in a couple weeks <laughs>